budget workshop. We will adjourn at 730 and we will have a regularly scheduled Board of Selectmen meeting at which we will have a special presentation on the Route 66 corridor study, among other items as well. So the only item on this special agenda is budget deliberations. And I'm going to take a couple of minutes just to say a few words about some thoughts that I've had and would like the board's thought. Um, just wanna probably state some of the obvious and that is that this is a very, very unique time. Having been for selectmen for a number of years, I've been through very difficult years, but this one is the worst. And it's, I think, the most difficult in terms of decision making. And some of the things going forward that we need to do, not just for this year, but I think other years as well, is we really need to look at something I talked about last night, and that is our overhead. And being able to really look at the costs, regardless of the services you're providing, we need to look at overhead and how it's being spent and mitigate it. And some of the things that I, I know that we've started already, it's not something new, something that we've always tried for. Number one, we're looking to save the cost of electricity in the town buildings and the school buildings and in mm. our fields. One of the particular programs that we're working on is something called virtual net metering program. And we have a tentative signed agreement, something in particular Lou Pair has been working with me on, along with Andy Bauer, members of our Clean Energy Task Force, and, and some of these programs, members of the Board of Education and Clean Energy Committee as well. And the virtual net metering program that we are engaged in looking at is a parcel of land in town that a private nonprofit <clears throat> is working with a for-profit company to put in a solar farm. And if that meets all of the siting council and other permitting requirements, they're interested in selling the electricity that they make at a discounted rate to the municipality, which is Portland. It isn't fully vetted yet. It is not fully permitted. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail on it, but in speaking with other towns, and I did speak with a town manager in a neighboring town, um, just the other side of Hartford, He's been doing this for several years and has realized considerable savings in electricity. The other program that we're looking at is something called Shared Clean Energy Facility. It's CE, excuse me, SCEF is the acronym. And this would be something that we would work with a company that would look for a for profit company to build solar panels on our capped landfill. Many towns have done this, and this particular program would be very much an improvement to our revenue income because we would be leasing the space to a for-profit company. And much as we lease other properties in our town, they would pay us a fee for leasing the property. They would install solar panels that then they sell the energy and other ways of making money. And one of the things that they do that is particularly attractive with this program is one of the requirements is they would have to make electricity available to low moderate income families at a discounted rate. That is a second endeavor that we're involved with, same group of people. And then the third area that we're working with the Board of Education on is the possibility of a, of a solar array that would be put on the Brownstone Intermediate School. And again, we don't have the approval of that, but it would be an improvement to the bills associated with electricity at that building. So those are some initiatives for saving 
electricity. You saw in the budget workshop that we had last night that we've saved a considerable amount with our street lights. And that was simply by having Eversource put in LED lights, <clears throat> excuse me, in our street lights. And we're beginning to see some good savings from that program. Another idea that I would like the selectmen to consider, and it's something that, again, Lou Pair had brought up last year, and that is either the rental or the possible sale of company firehouse number two on Main Street. There is revenue there if it was rented, and if it was sold, it would go to, I would propose that it would go back on the tax rolls. So there would be additional income with the tax rolls. Another initiative that I want to continue to work with the selectmen on would be analyzing the potential rental of town building space to either regional governmental entities, similar to the program that we put in place at Brownstone Intermediate School with Oak Hill. There are other non-school related governmental entities that look for space and nonprofits. And we have some space that we could look at allocating to increase our revenue income. Other things that we need to move on is the fields for our park and rec department. I would propose that as soon as appropriate, that Tommaso Field no longer be maintained by the town since we don't own it and we don't need it going forward. And also the leased fields, fields at the YMCA. Those fields out there, while it's been wonderful to have them, there is a cost associated with maintaining. And now that we have the Route 17 park nearly completed, we have always said that the rented fields would not be part of our jurisdiction and care and upkeep. The other area, and I think we may talk about this a little bit during our deliberations tonight, is within the Animal Control Department. As I told you last night, the city of Middletown is contemplating leaving after many years of successful use of our animal control paddocks. <clears throat> and I would investigate the rental of those paddocks to other municipalities and or nonprofits. And I think that we need to look at um, reducing the cost associated with the running of that facility. And I think we can talk about that a little bit more later tonight. Another initiative that I talked about last night and we didn't get too much conversation on, but I'm going to be proposing that we form a joint committee to review school building needs between the Board of Education and the Board of Selectmen. I think that we should constantly be looking at the needs of the buildings and to do it together would be the proposal that I think would allow us to then be prepared for when and if we need to do additional bonding in order to get reimbursement from the State Department of Education. There's a very clear, and I, I haven't reviewed it recently, but I do know they have a clear way of looking at school buildings. And if you require reimbursement, which we would, that you need to have appropriate committees and other types of actions taken. So those are some ideas that I want us to um, proceed on. And, and I know that selectmen would like to finish this year's budget as tonight and formally vote on it next Wednesday. That's our schedule. Um, but we also need to think about these things um, going forward, and I'm prepared to assist in any way I can, and I'm sure these aren't the only ideas that we have. But with that as a backdrop, I'll open it up to selectmen for their beginning of the actual deliberations for the budget. Who would like to go first? Um, I guess I'll, I'll go first. Um, Hey, Jim. I guess to get it started, um, you know, all the discussions that we've had, we've had, you know, certain principles we've wanted to make sure as we do the cuts, and that is to try to do the cuts in a balanced way. Um, basically, you know, and, and what we're looking at here is that obviously trying to do something that's going to help the taxpayers 
given that what's going on with COVID, uh, with, with the tax increase itself, but also to do something and try to take some steps to mitigate the potential loss of revenue that we're facing through some of our property rentals and, and the way we've been deriving rental in, in, the, in the district. Um, one of the things we're looking at here is, and by the way, on the Board of Ed side, we, we want to make sure and we're very cognizant of the fact that we don't want to impact teachers. Uh, that's, mm -hmm. I think, an important principle we all agree on. Um, at least I, that, I think that's where we're at. And, and so we're trying to be very careful and cautious about how we're doing that. Um, one of the things we looked at then if, in that vein is uh, basically freezing um, the capital expenditures. We have in, in the capital right now, $291,000. 125,000 of that is required because we're gonna be going through revaluation. So there's $166,000 right now that, that we can basically take out and that, that helps a, a significant, um, that helps us you know, with the, fill some of that gap in a significant way. Um, we're also looking at from a property rental, we, we were, have gone back and forth on this one a little bit about how to try to address this, but really taking a look at renting some of the space we have and trying to uh, really recover from an overhead perspective and try to recover some of the revenue that we anticipate could be lost um, allows us to attack it from the perspective of that if it's not, if the revenue losses uh, aren't as significant, um, that's helpful. And if we're able to rent some other facilities, that's also helpful. And we're gonna target $100,000 um, towards that end. We have looked at the potential where we just bought the property on the riverfront um, as part of the brownfield of not making a $50,000 payment in the open space. Um, we've got to obviously take a look at that because of the way we're structured and that's kind of an automatic payment with the ordinance, but given what was done and the work that was done with purchasing the property, we're gonna take a look and, and just kind of confirm what our latitude is to take that approach this year. Um, we've looked at some of the volunteer groups in town, some of the, some of the entities that have been going on. And then last night we talked about uh, $2,500 worth of cuts uh, to those groups, um, basically offsetting some of the activities that aren't gonna be happening so that we can reduce some of the contributions that would have been helping to support them. Given what's going on with Middletown and pulling out of the, um, basically their intent to pull out of the current agreement that they have to lease some of the paddocks at the animal control facility. Um, we looked at taking $20,000 out of that budget um, as a way to also to help close the gap. And then a town uh, reduction, we obviously, we, we've lost, one of our uh, planning folks has um, left to go on to other opportunities. And we are looking at that. We know that there's gonna be some cost offsets uh, from a personnel perspective and to pick up some of that work, but just being prudent um, given the situation, uh, not doing a full backfill at this time, looking at um, $15,000 coming out of that budget to, to, again, to help defray the cost. Um, that effectively equates, you know, on, on, on the pure town side, <clears throat> about $87,500 worth of cuts. Um, capital was 166, 100,000 on, uh, again, going after the, the potential property rentals and setting that target. Correspondingly, um, we'd be looking in order to have the, the cuts in a balanced way at about $114,000 impact to the Board of Ed budget. Um, obviously the Board of Ed will take a look at the exactly how they would implement that. That is completely within their purview. Um, our goal was to, you know, basically to take a look at some of the line items that had been presented as options that were non-teacher related and try to base some of the cuts on that to try to, again, um, try to be realistic in a way that would ultimately re not result in, in losing uh, teachers and changing that mix. Um, the net impact would be a reduction of four hundred and sixty-seven thousand six hundred and five dollars, uh, which would, you know, base. And this again, this is the back of the napkin at estimates. Obviously, um, I'll leave it up to our finance director when, when is to, to do the final processing um, to make sure it right down to the penny that we're accurate on this. But that would help get the mill rate down from the previous proposal. Uh, we were originally looking at a two point five one percent increase. This would bring us down to a 1.99% increase, 
and at the same time closing the revenue gap. Um, I think that's about, I think that basically sums up at least what we were looking at. And uh, so I'll pretty much stop there. Thank you, Jim. Others? Yeah, a question for Jim. Uh, Jim, when you were just talking about the mill rate, I thought the mill rate was 0.8 of an increase. When you said 1.99, you were talking about a percentage. Percentage. Okay. The, basically, here's what we were facing, right? Because of the potential loss in revenue, the initial budget increase, the initial budget proposal would have been a 2.51 percent increase, you know, percent increase. Um, in the mill rate, which equated to 0.85 mil. Right. With the potential loss in revenue, we were looking at uh, basically a 1.24 to 1.25 mil increase, which was about 3.68%. So it would have driven it up. This mitigation effort and trying to make some of these cuts mm -hmm. is the effort basically would bring it down so that the mill increase, I believe, would be somewhere around... Um, I want to say point, a little over a half a mil, 0. 0.56, and um, and overall a 1.99 percent increase in the mill rate. Clarification, Jim. What what would your what would the numbers mean in terms of a mill rate increase? Uh, the mill rate increase, I believe, would be 0. 0.56 mil, and, um, and it would be 1.99 percent over the current. Um, 38.31 mil rate. So just, just shy of 2%. Jim, it's Rick. Yes, Rick. I'm trying to follow your math or how mm -hmm. you got your numbers. So um, can I ask you a couple of questions on that? No? Sure. Can, can I in, just interject for a minute, Rick? Can everyone hear Rick Shar okay? He's a little soft in oh. the senior center here. If you could just increase the volume a little bit. Okay. Or... I think it's on my monitor, so I'm going to increase the volume on my monitor. Go ahead, Rick. All right, Jim, can you hear me okay? Yes. Any others hear me? Yep. That's better. That's better. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. So you had a freeze on a capital budget of 166000 Yep. Then you had reduced our, our open space contribution. Um, if we don't do that, that's 50000 mm -hmm. Then I think you had... 2500 this is where I started to lose you at $2,500 coming out of like town events. Yeah, basically what that is, is that um, in the page, um, and I forget exactly which page it's on, but that's where some of the, some of the volunteer groups, there's an allocation that goes. For example, there's been $500 that goes to the Brownstone Quorum. That $500 yeah. typically helps pay for the concert, right? It contributes to the concert series. Page 93. For everybody. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, that $500 would come out. A couple of reasons for that. One, given what's going on with COVID, we're not sure what's going to happen with the series. And two, we know that the concert series is going to be a four concert series versus five. So there's already a cost reduction. So that's a place where you can pull that out and it doesn't, it's not going to have a negative impact on, uh, on what's, what's happening. Then there was also a $2,500 allocation that went to the, um, fireworks right mm -hmm. and some of that was obviously to help with the fireworks operating was to help pay for police or whatever else was needed that well, obviously we're not doing the fireworks this year right so but they but that group is still doing really good work so there's still five hundred dollars left in that line item to assist them with the work that they're doing okay so now also along that line of thought there may not be a fair um, so that, I guess we don't know that yet, but that would be another additional savings, I would think, if, if there's no fare, in fact. Um, yeah. So then, then you talked about animal control, like 
I got that 20,000, the planning department position, 15,000. And then that was reductions. And then you thought there'd be potentially a hundred thousand dollar revenue gain from property rentals well that's that's what was there was the, the debate right whether or not you look at that um from a fund balance or do we try to raise the do we actually just try to get aggressive and rent some of the properties and that was one of the suggestions that was talked about last night for example renting the old firehouse or realignment of some of the facilities in town and renting some of the space that we can to, as as um, um Susan was talking about in the opening uh, discussion. In trying to do that, it's kind of you walk that line. Do you basically try to go after the revenue, or do you just, or do you just take it out of fund balance? Looking at it um, and talking, and, and you know, with Tom, it, it's we're probably better off going after the revenue. That positions us. Um, that positions us well if we can actually achieve that number. And it, it keeps that money in the fund balance and it helps us, it'll start helping us year over year. So it's a better goal. You know, if, if we come up short on it, well, as then we just have to manage the budget the way we typically do and try to be aggressive with, with uh, keeping our spending controls in place. Okay, so, and then on your, so you came up with a number, I think you said 467,405? Yes. Uh, 467,605. Okay. And, and Jim, you had indicated, yeah. I think that would reduce the, the mill rate from what we had, which was 1.25, would reduce it by 0 0.56? Yes. So the actual impact to the mill rate would be an increase of 0 0.69? It would be. Is there a fact to the uh, general fund, board, board of ed budget that I'm missing? No, the, the board of ed budget, to, to be clear, with the board of ed budget, what we looked at was, again, trying to get some cuts that were somewhat proportional, but also working from the list of potential items that were not related to teaching positions. To get that to that balance point, the number would be one hundred and fourteen thousand uh, one hundred and five dollars. You know, so one hundred and fourteen thousand in round numbers. Um, and, and that number, Jim, is the number that would be reduced on the board of ed side. The current number that was issued on March second, correct? Um. It would be the number, it would be reduced from the budget that was presented that reflected the 2.8% um, increase on the on the Board of Ed side. Okay, thank you. Okay. Oh. Can you repeat that number again? Um, 114,105. So you're taking that off of the, let's see, the Board of Ed had presented I guess uh, 21 million eight hundred and fifty something thousand. So it would come off of that number. That your hundred and fourteen. Um, yeah, that right now would be twenty one. All uh, right, twenty one million eight five two. Um, so it would come off of that. Mm -hmm. It's a reduction of a reduction of just over one percent. Mm. That's not one. No, from the operator. It's not one percent. More like half a percent. Is it? That's not one percent, Jim. Uh, what? What is no, that? No. No. Oh no! Well, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no. I, I, yes, you're exactly right. Actually, I looked at the wrong number on the spreadsheet. It is um, the one point one percent. Is I also took a look at it from because there were some capital items, right? There were some capital items that were targeted for BOE, and there were. I was were just capital. asking about operating. Right. So, uh, so the operating would be, I'll tell you in a second. Uh, 5.2%, um, uh, 0.52%, half a percent. Half a percent. The number Sorry about that. What's the number that you want total? Four million, 
Um, well, I think you're doing the math faster than I am. I think, yes, 21,738,061. Yeah. What did you want the total mill rate change to be? What did you want it to come out to? Uh, uh, I think the mill rate would be, I'm sorry, Tom, I couldn't hear you. Is that, I think it's point six seven. At this point, it is seven thirty in a minute, and so I would like to start the board of selectmen meeting on time so that we can return to the budget workshop. So I need a motion to go into recess from the budget workshop. Is there a motion? A move. I'll make a move. Motion made by Lou. Is there a second? Second, Rick. Second by Rick. Thanks, Rick. Workshop to go into the regularly scheduled Board of Selectmen meeting. Indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. So that's just 7.30. I think I'll turn it back to Jim because you were looking at the impact to the actual mill rate change. Jim? Yeah, the, the, in, in looking at it, right, the original mill rate um, that was going to be proposed was going to go up, I think it was 0.85. Um, that would have brought us up to a mill rate of 34.66 with the projected revenue um, reductions to offset those without any um, corresponding uh, reductions to expenditures that would have driven the mill rate up to 35.04. Um, the reductions that we're talking about would reduce from that point back, uh, back down 0.56, which would um, offset the potential increase, would result in, um, again, I, I'll always defer to, to Tom with the finals, but the best math that I can do shows um, the final would be a mill rate of 34.48, and that would in, indicate a 1.99% in the mill rate versus the uh, projected 2.51% um, before the before the, uh, the the COVID impacts were were taken a look at. Thank you. So I have a question, and maybe in addition to what uh, Jim had mentioned. Uh, first of all, Jim, I think you know you've done a nice job of spreading it out a little bit. Uh, there's looks like some uh, cuts for the Board of Ed, some for the Board of Selectmen, and for the capital improvement. Um, even though that reduces the mill rate increase uh, to about, I think, am I, at, am I right by saying 0.56? Yes. Okay. So this is what I was all, also thinking is that we're trying to see if we can keep this down as low as possible. And this is an effort to do so. And I'm and in our deliberations and looking at uh, current spending within the budget right now for this year, there seems to be some reserve that would carry over to next year or go into a reserve account. And so in doing so, I'm thinking, could we use some of our rainy day fund that could be dollars that we're not using this year that would go into the rainy day fund uh, and that maybe $200,000 from that could go into reducing that 5.56 to maybe something closer to an increase of 0.25. So what I'm asking for 
just uh, to throw out that to all the selectmen here, um, this is a tough time and a lot of people have asked to keep the Board of Ed budget, you know, whole. And I think that even though we're asking for a $114,000 cut, I think there still will be a good amount of dollars for the Board of Education budget. Uh, at the same time, there were people that were concerned about uh, bringing the budget closer to zero. Um, and we do have some reserve money this year that will probably go into the reserve for next year. Uh, and I think that that could be closer to $200,000. And if so, could we use that $200,000 to reduce the increase from 0.56 to possibly and I don't have the exact number, but if two hundred thousand dollars was was used from the reserve fund to reduce the budget, it would reduce it by close to two point five because a mill rate is eight hundred thousand. So I'm thinking somewhere around a point two five to six would be the increase if two hundred thousand dollars from the reserve could be used to decrease the budget. I'm not sure because um, when Jim said the reduction, Lou, the reduction from the 1.25, which was talked about in past meetings, it's a reduction of 0.56. So the increase is 0 0.67 that he discussed. If you took 200,000 off of that, you would subtract 0.25 from 0.67. So you'd get 0.42. To get to a 0 0.25 mil, you would have to reduce a total of over $400,000. Okay. So because a full mill is 800, let me just refresh. Right. A full mill is $839,526. The proposal for the Board of Education at the 2.8, I'm just going to use round numbers, at the 2.8% increase is about $600,000 in new money in the operating budget. If you reduce that by 114, then you're down just a little below 500,000. 500,000 in new money, if you didn't have any other changes in your revenues, is equivalent to about three quarters of a mil. So the increase is substantial for the Board of Education. And in order to meet that, it's very difficult in, in the current year because we had not contemplated, as we did this year, a zero mil impact. To get to a zero mil impact, from where we were a few a couple of weeks ago is about a million dollars. So unless you reduce expenditures, you can't easily get to a low mill rate. The concern that I would have with using what would be the equivalent of another half a million in fund balance is that this board decided not too long ago that we would use $610,000 of our fund balance for infrastructure and capital improvements. And so we spent this year, just a few weeks ago, 610,000 on many new items. If within the course of a few months, we then go into the new budget year, we already have 300,000 allocated here for fund balance usage. If you add another, to get to the 0.25, you'd have to add another 400,000. Then you would have 700,000 added to the 600,000 that you just used. And as we discussed the deficits within the water and sewer, I don't know where we're going to end this year as far as water and sewer is concerned. When you balance the water and sewer, it's balanced by the usage of the general fund balance until it's paid back. So in the event, so there's that, there's the numbers. The other concern, which is more of a practical concern, is that the state of Connecticut has spent a large amount of money to a 
accommodate the needs of the COVID-19. And we don't know how much of their rainy day fund is going to be used up. My concern is maybe not, hopefully, so much this next year, even though we don't know for fiscal year 21 what the state revenues are going to be to Portland. Whether we're going to get the $4.3 million in education cost sharing, I certainly hope so. Whether or not we're going to get the new town aid road money, the new local capital improvement money, the new money for revenue sharing that they give to us is still a bit of an unknown. And when you don't get those revenues that you contemplate, you do use your fund balance for cash flow. And you'll remember a few meetings ago, I talked about what the town of Essex has done. In, in light of the situation, they have made a vote of their Board of Finance and their Board of Selectmen to get a $5 million tax anticipation note should they need it. In that case, they not only have their fund balance, but they also have additional revenue that they could draw upon. Now, municipalities can't utilize, um, what do you call it when you get like a second mortgage, a line of credit? We, we don't do that. You have to get a, what they call a tax anticipation notice. So if our, our taxpayers are unable to pay their taxes, we would have, they will have revenue that they can draw upon to make up for that cash flow. We don't have that. So you would need to use the, I think it's about the equivalent of about $5 million. There's actually about $6 million in the, in the fund balance. But if you take the allocation for the deficit in the water and sewer, it's probably about $5 million. So if you have a cash flow problem, and we anticipate, as you know, from our budget, we anticipate in tax revenue for next year, almost $29 million, thereabouts, a little less. In prior tax years, we anticipate 276,000. In interest and lien fees, 150,000. And then in supplemental motor vehicle, 290,000. So it's somewhere in the vicinity of about $29 million. If you don't get that, you're gonna need to find the cash flow in another way. And you typically use your fund balance for that. So can you use more fund balance? Yes, and that is within your power. And you may need to. What I'm encouraging you to contemplate is whether you want to use that now or whether you want to reduce expenditures as opposed to utilization of fund balance. Well, you know, I think you made it very clear to what that money is going to be used for and the concern we have with uh, the revenue that we'll be uh, receiving this year. And of course, it is a tough year. Uh, I was just thinking that maybe we could reduce at least a portion uh, of that increase so that it would be a little easier on the on the taxpayer. But at the same time, I understand that uh, we may need a good portion of that for next year uh, based on things that we don't know. And I can understand that, uh, you know, as being a, you know, even just a private citizen, you usually want to have a reserve balance within your own uh, budget or your finances for at least uh, a three or four month period or a five month period, um, just as a general rule. And I think that that's uh, what you're what you're alluding to. And I and I respect that. Uh, I was just thinking that maybe we could reduce it somewhat so that the increase wasn't as much. But you know, 0.56 is a lot better than 0.8. So that's that's a good thing there as well. Um, it's point six. So, you know, I'll just, seven. Um, with that said, uh, I, I just thought that, you know, when we went through the budget that there was some dollars outside of the six million that will add to the six million and that maybe some of that could be used to reduce. And maybe when I said 0.25, I didn't say that it had to be the 0.25, but it, it, if $200,000 reduced it from 0.56 to, let's say, 0.4, that would be uh, a good way of reducing that increase. Yes, it's true. So could I? I don't have an. I don't have a number, um, Tom. I 
don't know if you have a number of what we contemplate for a potential end balance. The concern that, I mean, the concern that we've spoken about yesterday and, and you know, every time we hand out the reports is in the general fund right now, we're $557,000 short of our budget number. We have another 300,000 of fund balance that we utilize. So that means we need $855,000. Then we took $610,000 of fund balance. So you, have to have, you have to bring in, I need another $1.4 million to break even in revenue. So we're trying to do as much as we can to hold expenditures. So that's why you're seeing savings on items where you're seeing savings on expenses. Because there's, we're trying, we're not getting the revenue to the, to the level we are. We know we have a projection shortfall of over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in structural permits. We know that we're not now from brownstone. We're not going to get about fifty-seven thousand dollars from brownstone. We know that interest has fallen off, and we're a little, you know, we're a little short there. We'll probably be thirty thousand dollars short there. So this is why the, on the general fund side, this is why you're not spending to the level. We're trying to manage the revenue shortfall as well as and or not utilize fund balance to the most extreme. Obviously, the 610, we're going to utilize the fund balance if we did. So we're trying to come up with this between the 557 and the 300,000, 800,000 to, you know, add to the budget, not utilize fund balance. So that's what we're trying to manage in the town side. So I think there's a, a long way of going before you're saying that we're going to make money uh, as we go through the remaining two months. Uh, the, the, so, I mean, I think that was my answer to that. Tom, can you, uh, it's Rick, can you, you threw out two numbers, 557,000 and then 300,000. Um, can you just explain those two again? Yeah, so the 300,000 is what you utilize to balance your budget every year. So if you were, if you're trying to not utilize the $300,000 that we budgeted for fiscal 2020 okay. and to, to profit, you would need to get the 800,000 back, the 500,000 back that we're under in revenue now, the 300 that you didn't have fund balance, and then as well as keep your expenses within line to make that. So here's where you have over five, if you over, if you beat your revenue numbers, then you can spend your total budget and it works out. So you know we're we're there's a few areas that we know that there's a shortfall. We know there's a shortfall in permits. We know there's going to be a shortfall in rental income before June 30, and we know there's going to be a shortfall in uh, investment income. So we're trying to do our best to manage expenditures to you know stay stay tight on expenditures in the current year, so that we manage the the revenue and utilization of the fund balance appropriately. Because as we talked about last time, if you take the unassigned fund balance minus the deficits and the water and sewer, it took you down to 15 and a half percent. You took the 610, it got you down to 13.8%. You take the 300 for next year, you're already down to 12.9. I mean, it's a big slippery slope uh, of using fund balance quickly uh, if, if, if it was to be used. And so, and um, that's one of our goals is to not not have that as well as to have a, a strong fund balance so that we are able to carry cash flow in times of of need and in times of when revenues uh, are, are 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 just slow. Um, when you get into the past the uh, you get an early push in July and August generally, and then it slows down a little bit September and October uh, in November ish area kind of Picks back up with the end of December into January. So you're, you're watching those, so you, you need to hold that revenue for the peaks and the valleys uh, of when monies are coming through. 
Okay, I, I, I was just trying to see if I could find a way to reduce the budget. And I understand the, the logic be, behind uh, keeping the fund balance available for the rainy day that is coming. So thank you very much. I will, I will withdraw my uh, suggestion. So Jim, where are we at with this mill rate? Like you said 0.56 and I think Susan said 0.67. Uh, the, yeah, good, Rick, the, the reduction from where we would have been if we didn't reduce expenses was 0.56. The mill rate itself would be increase of 0.67 versus the original mill rate increase of 0.85, okay? Okay. And had we done nothing to mitigate the revenue shortfalls, it would have been 1.24 or 1.25, depending on how you round. And I would add, Rick, that if we had the 3.4% that I think was requested from Board of Ed and additional dollars from the general town, it would have been higher than the 1.25. So certainly the budget that was presented on March 2nd that came out of my office did have, just to repeat, a mill rate increase of 0 0.85. And with the changes, it is reduced to 0 0.67. Is that correct, Jim? Yes. If you wanted to reduce it more, I believe every point tenth of a mill would be 80, about $83,000. 83, or 84000 84, mm -hmm. Right. Now, if there are dollars left at the end of the year, we know that as all the books are closed out. And we know it definitely when the audit is performed, which is later in the year. Now, we'll have an estimate at some point, and that's what we were talking about last night in terms of the Board of Education because of the many, many changes that COVID-19 has created. But I didn't get a figure that was definite. And we were told last night they wouldn't know for two more weeks as to whether there are dollars that are unspent for this current year. Now, if there are dollars unspent, Lou, then we do know that the fund balance would, would increase. And knock on wood, I hope that does happen. And we have been fortunate that that has happened many years in the past but I can't tell you that right tonight, but I, I'm hopeful that it would be. In terms of mitigating the mill rate, unfortunately, you have to pass a mill rate before, um, it's within one week of the actual passage of the budget. And we'll probably look at that mill rate next week. The other way, you know, obviously you cut budget mill rates, not just by revenue, but by reducing expenditures. So if you reduced expenditures in the budget by $84,000, it would go down by 0.1 mill rate increase. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm okay with the cuts we've made so far. I think those are gonna be, um, I think some people are gonna think that's gonna hurt them a lot. Uh, and uh, some things aren't going to happen because of that. So uh, to in, to ask for more cuts, I think that would be uh, something that I wouldn't want to do at this point in time. What, what I want to do, however, is, you know, as we did this current year, we were able to adjust our numbers, reduce, and and look very carefully at our budget, and we had a zero tax increase this year for fiscal year 20. To do that two years in a row would be wonderful. At this point, it's not something we contemplated, but I think this board needs to look at next season 
and do our best to say we need to reduce overhead. We need to reduce the way we're running the town. And it's not, I don't think necessarily in the services that are being provided, while that is an open question, the services seem to be what people want in the community. But if you can reduce the number of buildings that you're using, you can increase your revenues coming in from various places. I mean, Mary Dickerson and I had a meeting, telephone meeting with the developer of Brainerd Place. He's ready to go. But until it actually is signed and the trucks show up, that's when everybody's gonna believe it. We all know that. But he is indicating he's coming in and those permits would be substantial. Dairy Queen is, is on the way. I know that they're starting to build, that's helpful. There's some other development along Route 66. Um, and the troubling thing is our current businesses have difficulty knowing what this COVID-19 is gonna do to them. It's very, very challenging. So that's why many towns in throughout the state, you'll see very low expenditure increases and very low or no mill rate increases. For you to do that, you have to cut this budget more. Um, the overall increase I think would probably be, Tom, would it be about two and a half percent? And the mill rate? No. The expenditures. I can work on that for you. Um, the mill rate would be about 1.98 percent. I'll work on that other calculation for you. Jim, I have a question for you. When you were talking about this 114,000 on the Board of Education side, um was that was in addition to i'm looking at the sheet that dr o'reilly produced um as 2021 budget changes from doe approved um and it had two sections a left-hand section where it had a uh let's see 3.83 budget increase. Then on the right hand side, it had um, if there were pre purchases done, um, you know, like with sightline project and soccer goals, Chromebooks, et cetera, it, it had come down to a 2.8. And then in your, you were taking that down another 0.52 percent. That yeah, that yeah, that, right. the The starting point was the two point eight percent, right, okay. which was what was proposed, and I think the the board had indicated the board of ed. I think I believe um, was was I'm never going to say comfortable, but I think that they were in agreement that they that there was a way a path to get to two point eight percent. Even if I think some of the details on on some of the specifics. Um, they're still working that out, but but I think the overall number was fine. These cuts are in addition to that. Um, again, it's not our job, right, to, to tell the board where they would make those cuts, but in terms of trying to look at things and see what was plausible from the perspective of fine, fine items that were not directly related to, for example, teacher count and things of that nature, right? You know, could, could you find enough of those items on the various lists that um, where you could do something and still be comfortable that you know we weren't going to be in, 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 uh, increasing class size, et cetera. That was the target. That was the goal. And then the other part was trying to keep some consistency between what we were doing on both sides of the equation, from a town side and from on and on the board side. So uh, those are those are the two principles. So um, and that's where that's kind of that's where the number comes from. Yeah, and Rick, when you look at that, you know, a lot of, you know, in the discussions we had with regards to the Board of Ed side, um, again, as, as Jim pointed out, the focus in talking about cuts was 
to absolutely avoid taking out any teachers to change the student teacher ratio and deal with some of the anticipated problems that they anticipate. Maybe if we have a large, say for instance, you know, kindergarten class or something like that. So we tried to, in looking at numbers, you accounted for that. Um, what I would say that is that when you look at your overall numbers, although the general feelings is gonna be is the, the focus is gonna be on the $114,000 cut and the $135,000 capital reduction. Um, when you go off of the numbers that they have for savings not used this, anticipated not be used this year. Right, I have that sheet. Uh, when you, actually. Yeah, when you, well, and, and the sheets that you would see probably are a little, and the ones we have, might be a little old because you know there's newer numbers coming up but um, when you look at it the hope is that the savings that they're going to have this year is going to be able to cover those capital costs so you're not going to see that impact that's the hope that i have is that that those savings will cover the capital costs that's why yesterday i asked the question of if there were items in there that you know and I pointed out saying the, speed, the sound system in the middle school because I thought, well, maybe if we're really tight and we have to worry about something that may not happen. But that's the hope is that those savings can take that into account. Um, obviously, if we didn't have those savings, then you know, it's tough. You didn't want those savings because the reason why we're in the mess we are, you got those savings, but we have a horrible situation right now trying to work through. But at least we may be able to cover those capital costs. And as Jim pointed out, the other items are based on items that don't relate to teachers. Again, to just try and avoid to touch the teachers. So um, what I will point out with regards to concerns, and I know Lou made, you know, and I understand Lou's point is, can we use a little, because we talked about it. To keep on tweaking how much fund balance to try to adjust the numbers, but my concern is in the meetings I've been with the school administration and listening to what I hear in with the, 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 what the, the various degree, um, um, department heads are talking to, are talking about at the state level, or watching and looking some of the stories about how school is being dealt with in other countries and trying to deal with this situation. We may sit here and worry about $50,000, but my concern is we're looking at a really tough situation if they come down, and I said this morning on the call, they could come down with some extremely tight guidelines, the state, on how schooling is going to be done. And I don't know, you know, when you look at it and, you know, France has five kids in a classroom, it's very hard to imagine how we're going to achieve that. So we have to be careful with the fund balance because I'm worried we're going, we may have to go into it. I don't know how we're going to deal with it with what's going to come down the pike. So I feel comfortable with where we land here in terms of the numbers we're talking about because we're kind of balancing. I mean, a zero, zero, two zeros in a row, there's a, there's a good amount, you know, when you look at the number, it's a good amount of funds we're talking about, taxes that we'd be having to make up for. You try to balance in between with not hammering either side. Both sides are taking painful hits, you know, one, 1.13% for the town, 1.14% total for the Board of Ed, and when you look at the overall budgets. But it's just, you know, you try to find what's in the middle. And um, I have a lot of concerns in what I've heard and what I know out here with regards to schooling. And um, let's hope that we could get to here cleanly, feel comfortable with this, because I don't know, we're gonna probably Unfortunately, we don't, when we don't know right now, because I think everything's gonna come out by the, end, by the end of the month, maybe into June. So you just don't know the plan or the strategies we're gonna to have to use to deal with that stuff, it's gonna be a challenge. So um, I, I, I know I feel comfortable, it's, not, it's painful. I'm not happy, I wish we could have stayed with the original budget. We were all along, the original budget we were feeling pretty good about, but now we're in another situation. So I think in coming into a fair number that doesn't totally hammer everyone. I think that it's a, it's a safe number where everyone unfortunately has to feel some pain. So the, the number there that you guys are looking for, if you, uh, 
the, the increase, if you do it, would be uh, based upon the um, change uh, budget due to the additional appropriation for the uh, Oak Hill. It, was, it comes out to a 1.7. If you do it without the uh, supplemental appropriation for Oak Hill, it was 1.94 is your increase. What about general government? <laughs> right now it looks like, I mean, I have to double check my numbers, but it looks like it's 0.81. Could you repeat that, please? <laughs> Again, there's many things you have to trail through because I'm trying to do this while you're talking, but I think it's a 0 0.81. 0 0.81. Is that what you said, Tom? Yes. Thank you. So the overall increase is probably about 1.5? Oh, no, you asked me the overall increase is what I gave you earlier. The overall increase is... You, you, the first question you ask is the overall increase. The overall increase, if you do it with the supplemental appropriation, it's 1.7, when that's you know which will be built in with the revenue uh, associated with that going forward. And then if you you know take that out, it was 1.94. But that I thought that was for the board of education. No, you asked me total. Then what's the increase in only the board of education? I will go and calculate that for you. It's a little hard in the room to hear everyone, so I'm trying to concentrate and hear. Um, what I'm what I'm hearing is year over year, the increase for the entire budget would be one point seven four. And that includes the extra money that we got after the budget was passed from Oak Hill. I think, I think Sue, it was 1.7 and then 1.94 if you include the Oak Hill. I thought I if you didn't it, include... No, it's the other no, way around. It's the other way, if you don't other include... Other way around? Okay. So I'm going to repeat it again. So it's, it's an overall increase of 1.74%. If you include 70. 1.70. 1.70. Okay. 1.70. And that's with the Oak Hill income or the revenue that came in with the supplemental appropriation. If you don't include that and you take the budget that was adopted at referendum last year, Year over year, it's 1.9, correct? 1.94. Okay. Now, general government, I think Tom said, just in general government, year over year, 0 0.8. If you look at only Board of Education, I think he's calculating that now. Susan, is is the is the Oak Hill money applied to um, our side of the budget or Board of Ed budget? Board of Education. Did you gave that? a supplemental appropriation of, I believe, eighty thousand dollars to the Board of Education subsequent to the budget being passed. So mm -hmm. their year over year for fiscal year twenty, Mike, mm -hmm. I believe, was two point eight percent for fiscal year twenty, which is the year we're in now. It has been said at some of our public hearings that there was a 0% increase to the Board of Education budget for fiscal year 20. That is not correct. 
the increase for the budget for only the Board of Education year over year from fiscal year 19 to fiscal year 20, that's this year, with the Oak Hill supplemental appropriation, Mike, mm -hmm. is 2.8%. Got it. Thank you. The mill rate impact year over year from 19 to this year was zero. General town government, year over year, it was um, very low. I have to look up. It was less than 1%. He was, I think the board of ed is 2.26, 2.26. That's, yeah, I had about 2 point, I had about 2.3 with my back of the napkin, so that's good. What was that number, Jim, or John? 2.26% 2. 2. for the board of ed. 0. 0.81 for general government. Overall, depending on how you calculate it, 1.7 to 1.94. Thank you, Tom. Well, well, I think, and I just wanted to add, because we were given statistics for this year, general government, year over year, for, from 2019 to 2020, and Tom will verify this for me, was 0.31%. So our increases in expenditures have been, I think, very reasonable. Is that correct, Tom? What did you say again? I think I said 0 0.31. That's from fiscal year 19 to fiscal year 20 for general government. Found on page 17 of the March 2nd budget. Up, oh, wrong page. Ho hold on. It's in the. Let me see. I had the general government of the prior year is negative 0.48, but that was with the revised budget, so. Yeah, I thought it was a slightly negative. It might have been negative 0 0.31. On page 15, Tom, of the May 29, 2019 budget. Yeah, that, yeah. On page 15, it says the adopted budget for 2020 was a 0.31% increase. Okay. I don't have that budget with me, so I take your word on that. The mill rate impact, was Ralph, it? was a decrease. Oh. Yeah. I think we were, what, so it was, we were down 0.33 mil on the general government and up 0.33 mil on the BOE and it netted at zero. Right. So where we stand right now, we're looking at 0.67 mil rate increase. Yeah, the only other modification that I made to make that come out to the exact 0.67 is you had to uh, make the property rental be the add the add on and property rental had to be 100,500, so that makes the number be 373300. And then the interest number was 60 was changed to 60,000. Do you want to 
run through the numbers that I think that you guys told me to change to make sure that I understand what you're talking about on the pages or not? Sure. Be helpful. So I told you the revenue numbers on page 45. It looks like you made a $750 reduction to gasoline, 51001. So that's $5,000 now. Yes. Th thank you for reminding me. I actually didn't have that one in here. On, uh, the, on page 73, it looks like you changed part-time payroll to 71,200. 71,200. What page is that? What, Tom, That's what page, page is that? 73. So, thank you, sir. That number goes to what, Tom? Seven one two zero zero. Okay. That's one one zero oh, three. Okay. Um. Yes. Yep. Yep. Going. Just checking page by page. Oops. Social services, which is page ninety three. Uh, 86029 goes to zero. 88009 go, no, that's the wrong one. 88042 goes to 500. Yeah, yes. And um, the, the, yeah, 861, uh, no. 86029, you said, goes to zero. Yeah. Eight six eight eight six zero two nine, and then, sorry, I don't have I don't have it written on the pages, so I'm catching up with you. I have it elsewhere. Okay. Yeah, he's, yeah I have it on the pages. I marked them last night. That's he. That's correct. Yeah. So eight six zero two nine is zero. Yep. And then uh, eight eight zero four two goes down by two thousand to five hundred. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. yes. Correct. Okay. Okay, page uh, 107. Yeah. Animal control goes to 54,643. Yeah. Correct. Uh, open 97008 goes to zero. Okay. 90012 goes to 125. And nine zero zero three goes to zero. What goes nine to zero? zero, zero three? That's nine zero zero, zero one three. Oh, one three. So that one thirty five goes to zero. That's what that's what they that's what somebody told us. Yeah. Yeah, that that's how the one sixty six goes away in capital. Oh. So I, mean, I know that's thirty thousand was for part of a grant. But. Tom, could you just go over on that page again? The three, the ones that were touched. I think I missed one. So you got animal control. Animal control was fifty five four six four three. Yep. Then open space nine zero zero eight. It looks like you changed that to zero. Yeah. Okay. Nine zero zero one two. You changed to one twenty five. Nine zero zero one three. You change the zero. Yep. Page one one nine. You change account number zero zero five zero one to fifty four six forty three. But we left property rentals this level that we had, and then. Can you repeat that, Tom? It looks like on one one nine. It looks like yeah, I'd be changed zero zero five zero one to fifty four six forty three. But everything else on the revenue stayed the same. So property rental stayed at the higher level. And then on uh, page one twenty and one twenty one. But I guess one twenty. I'm assuming you want me to take the twenty thousand dollars out of regular payroll. 
So I took it out of that, which is 11001, regular payroll. Yeah, that's just showing the um, the corresponding with the with the 119, right? That's the corresponding reduction in the transfer associated with the reduction in the payroll that we previously noted, right? Say, 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 uh, can you ask it another way? Yeah, no, no, just the animal, that's just showing the animal control, the reduction in the animal control. Right, you, you, you asked me to cut the transfer, so I'm showing the revenue cost and transfer, and then you need a corresponding expense. Correct. No, I just, that's what I'm saying. I'm just making yeah. sure I've had it, why well, I've seen it in two places, making sure I had it right. Yeah, okay. that, on that, on the, the, page, uh, the page before, which is 119, the 54643 needs to equal what is on the transfer page of 107. They need to equal. So now that's 54,643. That will be. There's also changes to capital, but I didn't change those yet because I wanted to really make sure you were doing all that before those get eliminated. Because I have to move them to another location. So there's changes on that. Do you want me to go through and do those changes or no? Yes. All right. Hey, Tom, it's Rick. Um, on page, I guess it's 119, right? What did, what did you reduce there? What, uh, can you tell me what budget are you in? That's under the animal control. Um, Payroll number, I know that. Right, that's on 120. And then I reduced the transfer number by 20. Okay, but did you do anything on page 119 where it's where it's the I guess it's the revenue side? Yeah, zero zero five zero one. Goes zero. down to five four six four three. Okay. Got it. I kept missing that. All right, so going into, I guess you have to back into this a little bit, but going into, so I guess we're going to move the, on uh, page, this would be the 137. I guess we're going to move the 18,500 to the, to the next year. So it goes into the next column. We go to securities, which is on the next page, the 18,005. It's going to go into the next column, which would make it 218,500. So in 2021 22, it goes from being whatever number it was, it'll be 218,500. And then the other column, the first the column. Is Twenty one goes to zero. Scrubbers goes to uh, zero and the twenty one. It goes uh, to seventy two thousand the next year. Sixty thousand for technology. Which has the 30,000 of the USF funding in it. It's going to go to zero. The next column would be 160,000. Page 139, 89070 is Airline Trail uh, Consultants. That would go to zero. Uh, next year would go to 18,000. Uh, 
page 141, computers and peripherals, which is, that's everything the town does for any type of technology or any issues with working from home or any Zoom meetings or backups or any of that nature. That's going to go to, uh, I guess, zero. So that next year it'll be 76,500. Was it the state grant? No, that's staying the same. Uh, the, the, uh, the general fund contribution changed. Oh, okay. And uh, repeat that then, um, what it was. What, the, what was the change? It goes from whatever it was now to 125. Oh. Okay. It was 291. Right. 291. Yep. Can I ask a question? Because on one of those pages you changed the airline trail. 3,000 we made go to zero. I thought, I can't remember, I'm trying to find a page where that exists. I thought we had that conversation. Did we decrease that to zero? I thought, I don't everything, remember. What, everything from capital was gone except for the- Oh, that's the capital. I'm sorry, that's right, capital. I'm sorry, that's right, capital number. So then, So the other line that changes is under general obligations in column in uh, on page 136, general obligation bonds goes to 4.062994. Page O, not count O, 503. Repeat that number, please. <laughs> So when we have the changes, it changes uh, the number that it was, which was 3851994 becomes 4062994. For 2021? No. No. The year, the, the oh, next for, year. for the next year, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah.
the changes? There's going to be a change in a second. This one's silly. So on that general obligation bond number for the second year, it should have been 4017994. Not whatever I said. All right, hold on. 401. 7994. Because you want the total number to come out to 8516700 for year two. So Susan, no Tom's doing that. Right now, we're at a 0.81% increase for general government and 2.26% for Board of Ed. I believe that, is that correct, Tom? With an overall, with an overall 1.70%? Um, right, that's what yes. I have. Okay. Yes. With a, mill, with a mill rate increase of 0.67%. Yes. Okay, so those are the, okay, got it. Those are the numbers, yes. Got it. On a Another 200, who was that? Oh, I'm sorry, it, it was Michael, it was go ahead. Um, you mentioned that uh, down in Essex, they've taken a $5 million, what kind of loan did you call it? Tax anticipation note. Tax anticipation. Is that something that either you or Tom are recommending that we do um, just in case with all the unknowns coming up? Is there any downside to that? Are the interest rates, I imagine, low right now? And is there any well, downside or liability to that? There, there is a cost to that. So you would have to add to your budget about at least $10,000 for legal costs. Okay. So at this point, I am not recommending that. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe Tom is either, but he can speak for himself on that. Okay. Tom? At the current juncture, you know, we continue to monitor the situation. Mm -hmm. uh, we consider, you know, consider, uh, you know, we get the everything passed uh, expeditiously and we get the bills out to the taxpayers. Uh, the more we anticipate mortgage companies uh, making payments as, as uh, expected. We're hoping that, uh, that that we will have enough, you know, cash flow. And we expect cash flow to be good enough that we wouldn't need to do that. Um, but you know, it's it's, it's, you know, it's there's no crystal ball, but they you know, they're they're uh, we went with the, the low interest low rate rate loan uh, program. Um, some people may have gone with deferrals. If we had a deferral, we probably would have had to do that. We're hoping. You know, without the deferral, we wouldn't need to have that extra cost um, just for really more or less, a, you know, holding a note to wait for taxes to come in. So we're trying to, you know, alleviate that additional uh, cost to the town and the taxpayers. Got it. Okay. Mike, a um, 0.67 increase means for a property value that would be taxed at uh, $250,000, a property of that value would be about $167.50 increase for the year.
for a hundred thousand dollar house, it'd be sixty-seven dollars a year. Just to give you some perspective. You're talking about assessed value, right, Susan? Could you repeat that, please? You're referring to the assessed value if a house. I'm is referring to the seventy percent value of the full. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. So the house would be a market rate of higher than that. Um, Jim, with your with your reduction to the board of ed, what what number are they would they be at now? Um, they would be at their operating budget. Um, um, was basically at 2.8% would be, I believe, 21,852,166. No. No? 21,738,061. Uh, no, I was, I was doing both numbers because I was showing the reduction, Tom. I said before the reduction at the 2.8%, it was 21,852. With yeah. the new, with the reduction of 114, I had 21,738,061. Twenty one million seven hundred thirty eight thousand. Okay. Yeah. Susan, this is Mike again. I lost the call on you a bit ago. Would you say that again? Here we go. Here we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, the last thing I heard before you froze up on my screen was a 0.67 mill rate on a $250,000 mortgage. What, what was the increase on that? You were giving me an example. It, when, it's not on mortgages. It's on the assessed value. The assessed value. That's right. What so, Mike, if you had a house, the 70% value of the house would be 250000 meaning that house would be worth more than that. Right. But the amount that you would be taxed on is 250000 You multiply 250 times 0 0.67, which would be the increase, and the increase would equal $167.50. Got it. Thank you. If it was a $100,000 assessed value, a lower assessment, then it would be $67. $150,000 property times 0.67 would be $100.50 for the year. Got it. If you went down to the 0.42 mil, which we had talked about at one point for the $250,000 assessment, instead of $167.50, would be approximately $105. So that would be a difference of $62 for the year for that property. And for the 100,000, Instead of $67, it would be $42, just to give you some perspective. If it's zero, it's zero. That's an easy one. That's an easy, that's easy math. I was gonna ask if that would be the same for the $100,000 house, but you know. <laughs> You're trying to stump me, I know. <laughs> Are there any further suggested either reductions or increases or changes? I, don't, I know it's not a lot of money, but did we take out 
the five thousand dollars for the Memorial Day parade that we are doing? We we didn't we didn't, Mike, because even though the Memorial Day parade is going to be impacted this year, we really hope right the the budget this budget will be for Memorial Day parade twenty twenty one. It's going to push it. Just going to push it ahead. Right. So we so we have it in the budget for for next year. So you have reduced the budget that I put forward on March 2nd by 400, or you've changed the budget, I should say, by $467,605. Is that right? It, it's actually 468305 because there was a $700 reduction that was made last night to a fuel that I had forgotten to put into my list. Thank you. Um, this is along the lines of Mike, what Mike Pelton just brought up. It's really small number, but if, um, what page, Rick? Guess, no, I guess I'm, I'm um, it's on the page where we had the um, the fair and the fireworks and all those numbers. Yep. Um, page 93. 93. We're budgeting for the fair, but I, I suspect that we're not going to have a fair. Um, but yeah, anyway, I guess we just leave it in there. I mean, it'll just be in our general fund. Um, yeah, we looked at that, yeah, Rick, right? And it was big. Yeah. yeah, because we didn't have an official, right? We knew we knew the parade, or, or right? So we, you know, like, I mean, we knew the um, uh, fireworks already. We knew the fireworks now. But we didn't know the, we don't know about the fair yet, even though we can strongly suspect. Did you, could you repeat what you said with the your thought the change in expense was? What the seven hundred dollars? No, from Susan's budget to to your budget. Oh, I I I I, I have it at four hundred and sixty. Um, actually, let me do Yeah. Uh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. No, no, no. Hold on a second. 300, I think it's 368,305. Uh, and remember, and yeah, we, we chip right. We changed from saying we were going to look at fund balance for 100,000 and instead we're actually going to try to rent properties. We're going to try and generate that. We're going to aggressively go after some revenue. So it's 368,355. Um, I have 305, but that can just be a typo somewhere. I have three zero five. I've got exactly one one hundred and sixty six thousand for for capital, fifty thousand in open space, two thousand five hundred to the to basically the page ninety three items, the miscellaneous um, expenditures there, twenty thousand dollars even for animal control, fifteen thousand. Um, for in, in payroll for plan, uh, planning department, $700 for gasoline. And then on the BOE, it was 114105. 
Well, I know the number right now. The number is coming out to three five two four six two five five as total expenses. But that's because you're taking now. That's with a hundred. That's a hundred and fourteen one hundred five. Is that what you want? Yeah, one fourteen one hundred five. Then we had already previously taken three five one nine forty. So yeah, you're, and then uh, the general funds come out one three five zero eight one nine four. So it comes out three six eight three five five. Yeah, that I mean that's fine. So that's that's the reduction, correct? But the change yeah. the change in the budget with your increase in revenue and your decreases in expenditures, the net effect would be the four sixty eight, yeah. Yeah. Would be a hundred thousand more in revenue. And three hundred sixty-eight thousand three hundred five dollar reduction in expenditures. Yes. Okay. Right. And I think Tom's coming out with three fifty-five. I'm not quite sure where the fifty is different, but but that can just be. So Jim, um, yeah. the reality is if we don't get the- Oh, wait a minute. Stop, go, or, no, go Rick, ahead. let me, hold on a second. Hey, Tom, did you have a reduction in gasoline of 750 or 700? I think it was 750. Okay, I had written down 700. That's why I was asking the question. That's yeah, the $50 difference. Yeah, the number is supposed to be, it's 5,000 now, so it was 750. All right, so and now now you and I have the exact same numbers. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Rick. Um, so I just wanna verify the reality is if we don't get 100,000 in additional revenue from rentals, essentially that money's gotta come from general fund balance. In other words, if we only get 50,000 in additional rental. Right. Yeah, I think the rest of that then translates, and I mean, I'll defer to Susan, but I, I would think that the rest is going to translate either from, um, if depending on how the re other expenditures and other accounts are tracking, whether there's already other savings in those line items, and whether or not you need to move something, or if you do, there is, it's one of the reasons we have contingency. Um, I would assume that's how it would work, but I'll defer. Yeah, so Susan or Tom, I'm asking if we don't achieve our so, goal of getting this revenue from rental. So, uh, so, you know, yeah, so what they're saying, we uh, there was a contemplation of the reduction of 250 of revenue for a while, and then as I thought about it, bringing the 150 back, now the things that seem to be opening more. Uh, so, you know, Hopefully we hit the 250, but I mean, if you don't, you know, you hopefully hit the uh, the extra 100,000 more. So they would either need to reduce the expenditures and hold if it doesn't come in, or uh, if uh, worse came to worse, there, you know, and it was needed, you possibly would have to do a supplemental appropriation. But most of the things you would try to do is is try to hold expenditures as much as possible. To uh, mitigate the hundred thousand dollar less um, activity, if you can, and if you can't, then it would be uh, contingency first, and then if the you know, overflow contingency, it would be go back for a for a supplemental appropriation. Okay. And that would be the case, Rick, for any reduction in revenue. We try to make it up by not spending, or if necessary, you'd have to go to a supplemental appropriation. But if we know it's not coming in, then we would hold the line on spending, institute a freeze, um, and other measures that we might take, such as not filling positions or other actions that could be taken. 
Uh, I just, I, I think the idea of, you know, renting some of these town buildings is, is a good one. Um, I'm just not sure, at least in the next few months, how successful we'll be at that. Right. Um, but we don't know if we don't try. So, um, but I, I, I just, I just wanted to know, like, if, well, if we didn't meet our goal, what would happen? Right. The question's been answered. Yeah. Right. Thank you. I, I, think, I think to your point, Rick, is that is why you don't want to take more from fund balance at this point because of the unknown. If we had some certitude, then it's a lot easier in terms of trying to make the budget balance. But because we just don't know what's going to happen, it's very difficult. So I'm, we're trying to be good to our services and also the quality of the services. And we're also trying to be recognizing that um, we need to minimize the increase in the taxes. But if you wanted to go to zero, I think you need to really cut the budget a lot more. You would have to cut it by probably another, if you went to zero, 0.67 mils is, um, excuse me, it's 0.67 times the 830. No. 639,000. You'd have to reduce the budget by $562,482. Well, I think the fact that we had essentially a zero a, a zero mill in last year that um, had we not had that, I, I I would have said this if ever there was a year to push for no tax increase, this would this would have been the one. But we just came off a year where we did that, um, and given this is not a draconian increase um and i like i said to you this morning susan i mean the the, the town government side was pretty lean to begin with <laughs> um and um we all agree that we don't want to cut staffing at the schools um so i, I think we're we, we may have to settle on this but um I agree with what you're saying. We really have to look at overhead going forward. From all our all our buildings, the schools, the town government buildings, the fields, the, uh, the, the cost of fuel and electricity, because we're just going to be coming back to this. It's just going to be a repeat next year if we don't. And I think just as um, Mike Hernandez said a few minutes ago, as we meet and we talk about the reentry committee as a group, we need to have our own selves set up as overhead reduction group. And you need to talk about it every time you meet because it's not easy to do. And it needs to be in concert with the Board of Education. We are one. We are one town and we need to look at how we can manage what we need to do but decrease the overhead expenditures. And it's, it's, um, it's very important. Well, I think we probably need to sleep on this and digest it and um, think about it for the next few days. Um, we're not, you know, we're not, the, the plan wasn't to vote on this tonight. No, you, it's not on your special agenda. You cannot vote tonight. We have a meeting scheduled for next Wednesday. If you want to meet sooner, of course you can. That's your decision. If you want to meet on Tuesday, you may, or keep it to the Wednesday. 
when Wednesday's the deadline though, we have to vote Wednesday night, right? The the deadline? Yeah. No, not necessarily. I think we have till I think technically we have it till June this year. Sometimes. It is till June. Okay, he did. Yep. The difficulty okay. the difficulty is getting all of the bills prepared and also getting all of the accounts set up for the year that starts July 1. So that's why we had tried to do it and why we traditionally have this completed by the 30, 31st of May. It gives us the month of June to get everything established. We don't want to be late sending things out. We want to do things um, in an orderly fashion. So I think the next question I'd like to ask is, do you want to meet next Tuesday in a workshop and or you have your meeting Tuesday instead of Wednesday? I think Tuesday would be good. I, I would be for that. Okay. Just gives you a little more um, opportunity if you need to uh, go to the next night. I can schedule a meeting for Tuesday. Um, it can be early. It can be late. What's your pleasure? So, are, are you saying we we're gonna instead of Wednesday, we're gonna vote on this Tuesday? I'm just suggesting you can do that in case you had more questions that you needed answered before your self-imposed deadline of the 27th. There's no real reason other than it just gives you another day if you needed it. So do we want to schedule Tuesday in that event, but leave Wednesday there just in case mm -hmm. and to see where we land on Tuesday so it's already booked so we don't have to worry about those ramifications? So I would have the resolution prepared for your review on Tuesday night, and we would establish that as a special meeting for the adoption of the 2020-2021 budget and the adoption of the mill rate for 2020-2021. If you don't reach the consensus and wish to vote that night, I wouldn't change the establishment of the Wednesday night meeting. Okay. So in other words, Tuesday night, we can have further discussion and if we wanna vote on it, we can. And if we're still, if we're not in, agreement then we yep. meet the following day to yeah there's a lot to think about mm -hmm. what would you like to do i could also um try to prepare as much as i had for the re-entry committee so you could look at that too because mm -hmm. i think that's very important for tuesday night yep yeah that'd be great Mike, I think, Mike yes. likes that. Anybody else? If you want yeah. to raise your hand, yes. Fine with me. Yes. Fine. Oh. Mr. Shar. Okay. I'll go along. <laughs> I'm getting barraged with text messages. <laughs> You're getting barraged? Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I was just reading some comments um anyway to be continued next week i guess yes is there a motion to adjourn at 10.05 so moved second no all in favor aye, aye. 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 opposed any abstentions motion carries good night everyone night. Good night. thanks